the tale of two halves, because in the first half, you love to see young players emerge. You get excited about that, and you start to talk about your patience and, and, and letting the team grow and all that stuff. But if you're in the mix in the second half, your mindset completely changes as a fan and also, I think, as an organization. And you start to say, well, wait a minute. Let's take advantage of what where we are right now in the standings, what team we have here, and can we advance the cause a little quickly or quicker than we thought we would. And so that, that, there's the thing, is that once you get to the second half of the season, I think you do definitely start to change your outlook on a season depending on where you are in the standings. They're right there, obviously. They're a team that should make the playoffs They're in the playoff hunt right now. They, they were a team that was leading the division for most of the first half, and now they want to try to work their way back into doing that. But you're right about the message and what it sends, what it sends to the players in that clubhouse as well. And Joe Girardi talked about it last night. It should tell them, hey, you know, we're in this, and, and we need to continue to, to, to play and, and play hard and, and play better than what we've done. But it should be, you know, pick me up in there in a sense like, hey, you know, there's a lot of people that believe in this club. Now, again, Frazier's the story, and that's Todd Frazier. Of course, he's the story because he's a local kid. No, I don't kid think that Todd Frazier's the story, man. Well, no, no. What I mean is what people are talking about, I should say, is Frazier. Because he's from Jersey, because he, the picture of him next to Derek Jeter. He's batting 207, though. Exactly. I'm going there. That's where I'm getting to. To me, the bigger part of this, though, is Robertson and, and Canley and what they can bring to the bullpen. And that's something that I think is the most important part of this. Because the Yankees, could could you argue that they might still need a starting pitcher? But – the urgency isn't there. The urgency, again, isn't that bullpen because what they have offensively is good enough. The The bullpen is, is, that, is the area that needs to be the strength. And it again shows you that maybe if this was 10 years ago, the Yankees are looking for a starter. But it well, just they shows were. you a change in mentality. No, but they were. Well, they were in Quintana. Yeah, they thought they had a deal done with yes. that. And I think I look at this move like I look at the Giants signing Brandon Marshall, right? Is that the real need was at left tackle mm-hmm. or offensive line. But yep. when you start looking at you know free agents available and you look at the draft, you're going, okay, I'm not going to get the bang for my buck on the offensive line. I'm not going to find anyone in the draft that's going to all of a sudden we can plug in and be that difference maker. I'm not going to spend all this money to get a left tackle. Joe Thomas doesn't want to come here. So what's our next best option? Well, Eli could always use another big wide receiver. Yep. Brandon Marshall makes sense. He's in New York for the right price. So you make that move because you feel like you're getting the best bang for your buck. I think with the bullpen, getting Robertson, who's already already shown you won a championship here, his ability to handle New York. Um, you bring in Kane Lee, who's a strikeout machine. So you solidify your bullpen, which is supposed to be your strength anyway. You take some of the pressure off of Aldis Chapman. And now, you know, can Green move to the starting rotation? That's a possibility because yep. you have all this flexibility. But I think what this move essentially does is it doesn't allow the team to get to get complacent. It re-energizes this team that struggled headed into the All-Star break. I mean, if there was any team, and you see what happened to the Cubs. The Cubs make that move. They haven't lost the game yet since the, since the All-Star break. So they're re-energized. But what it also does, in my opinion, and the biggest key for me in this move, and I go back to what Brian Cashman talked about when they asked, and in all the headlines were that, you know, Torres should be up in, ma- in the majors. After the spring he had, he should start with the Yankees. And he started talking about the fact that, you know, the kid has never played in cold weather. He wanted to make sure that when that kid came up, he was going to have the best opportunity to be successful, mm-hmm. right? There was a lot of talk during spring training that Aaron Judge might not even make this team. Right. That he was going to lose out to Hicks. That's why he was in a hotel. Makes the team. <laughs> he wouldn't rent. Bursts onto the scene, wins the home run derby, has the 30 home runs and everything else. And I really, truly believe that this move starts to quiet some of the Aaron Judge noise. 